All right, guys, um, as a reminder, on Friday, there will be no in-class class, class <laughs> in-person class, okay? Um, I don't even know if I got to tell you this after everything on Monday, um, but we, I will record, it'll probably, it'll be homework 18. I know it. Okay. Uh, Cause I don't think, I think we'll get through 17. If we don't get through it all, that will be part of the video as well. Uh, the only thing is if I happen to get to like 18 seems very short to me. So I may end up doing homework 19 as well in the video, but I'll post that worksheet, the guided notes, so you can take notes as you watch the video. I just don't have those run off. So anyway, okay. So on Monday, we were doing homework 17, which is about inverses. They have to be one-to-one. -one. The, the original function has to be a function, and it needs to be one-to-one -one in order to have an inverse, which means it needs to pass a horizontal line test, okay? The uh, vertical line test tests for function or not, horizontal tests for one-to-one. -one. And if it is one-to-one, -one, then they have an inverse. So we did all that on the first page. Uh, we then went to determining whether or not they're functions. Okay. And what you do is you plug G, it's the composition of F of G of X, where we plug G into F, that's what we did here, and it kicks out an X, okay, an X, that is a positive X, and then we do F of G, I'm sorry, G of F of X, the same thing, except for we take F and plug it into G, and then it kicks out X. That makes them invoice, uh, invoice, inverses, okay, so these happen to be inverses, it has nothing to do with these really like matching. They will match because they both end up to be X. Everything else cancels out. But if these two had matched, it still would not be an inverse because they have to end up with X once you plug one into the other. Okay, so here, no, not inverses. We did this, when they give you points, you find what those points are on the graph, which I did this for you, but you could have very easily. And then what you do to graph the inverse is you switch your X and your Y's and then graph that. Notice that functions and inverse function, they reflect over the Y equals X line. Okay, they mirror each other. So now we go to this back on track, <laughs> okay? This one here, they give us the points. You could have found the points, okay? So this one, the inverse of it would be four, five. You just switch the X and the Y. This one right here is going to be negative one, three. This one right here, it's going to switch to two, zero. And then this one will be zero, negative three. Okay. And now let's graph that. Find my other pin. I guess I'll just do in blue. Okay. So I'm going to graph four, five. I'm going to go over four. Here's my, this is my x axis. Here's my y. So this is the origin right there. Okay. Um, so I go over one, two, three, four, up five, one, two, three, four. And I don't quite have enough, but I'm going to make it work. So about right in there. That is a point four five. Then I'm going to go negative one, three. So I am going to go left one, up three, one, two, three. And what I do is I'm going to connect these in order, okay? So I'm going to use a straight edge because it looks better. Then two zero, right two of zero is right here. And then the last one, zero, negative three, 
zero down three. It's not here, so I'm going to make it work. I'm guessing about right in there. And then I connect this. Again, it is going to reflect. It looks kind of weird because they're kind of crossing over each other, but it does reflect about this, the y equals x at, uh, line. Okay, that's the line of symmetry there. Okay, those are pretty easy. All right, this right here, what we're first going to say is the one-to-one -one function h is defined as this, okay? Well, then it tells us to find h of 2. Does anybody remember what that 2 stands for? What is that 2? What do I do with the 2? What did, I mean, what does it stand for? I'm trying to find my red pen. That's the x, right. That is the x value, okay? Okay, so remember that always stands for your x. X is equal to two. Well, then you got to find what y is because this all haven't you seen me do this before? Okay, I've done it almost every time I've done this problem. Okay, for a problem like this. All right, so looking at these points, this is h. What is the y value when x was 2? 3, right? Right there. So it's 3. OK, but then they go to the inverse of h. So you've got to find the inverse before doing these problems right here. We just did that except for with graphing. What did we do with the points? We switch it. So let's do that first. Let's first find the inverse of h. That's not negative one, okay? That's not an exponent. I should make this bigger. <laughs> it's kind of small for you though on the back. There we go. Okay, so this first point is going to be one zero because all we do is switch our X and our Y. Here, it's gonna be two one. Here, three comma two. Here, four comma three. I did better today than I did on Monday. I kept writing, just rewriting them. That wasn't working. <laughs> now that we have what the inverse of h is, this tells you that x equals 3. Well, what's y when x is 3? 2, right? And now... This tells us that x equals negative 1. It's like that every single time. That's what that number is. Sometimes I don't give us x. So, you know, you, they just say x and they, you just leave it. Okay, but in this particular case, you don't have a negative 1, do you? So here's what I did. I'm like, okay, this is a function. I'm just acting like it is a line, okay? I think they want you practicing this, so here's what I did was I went over here and I just pretended like this was going to be a line and it wasn't just those four points, okay? So it was one zero right here. It was two up one right here. Uh, how about we do that? Does that work? <laughs> then my next point is three, two. See how it's linear? And then the next one is four, three. Whoops. Kind of right there. See how it makes a line? So what I did was I went this direction with that. So if it this was up one over one, I went down one over one, okay? Which this one would have been zero negative one. And then I went down one over one again. So it's right here, which would be negative one, negative two two, right? So now it has a value. Now we have a value of negative two. I don't know if that's what this problem was asking, but why would they put something if there were, that's what you're, we're just teaching you now? So 
maybe it would have been, I don't know. If you have, if you run into one in Alex, you can let me know. Yes. So, uh, in that in this particular case oh, okay. and that's because the way the line went okay. not necessarily because <laughs> if they'd have moved those points up then it wouldn't have been the same number just the opposite sign it just so happened to be this one so but i could see why you'd think that all right this right here we are now going to find the inverse Okay, they're going to tell you that it's one to one. So that means you have an inverse. They're going to ask you to find it. Easy peasy stuff, but you have to practice it. Okay, there are four steps, and really they're not that hard. All right. The first step is to replace, take out your f of x and replace it with y. So that's what we're going to do. Here's the first one. We're going to take this out and we're going to put a y in there. Equals two plus one half x. Anything hard there? No. The next step tells us to switch the x and the y. So this y becomes an x and this x becomes a y. Not hard, right? Now we're going to solve for y. This is stuff we've been doing since in third, you know, algebra one. We're going to get y by itself. That means we're going to take this two to the other side by subtracting it. And we're going to get x minus two equals one half y. To get rid of a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. Okay. So, or get rid of the two, it'd be just the reciprocal of one half is two, right? So I'm going to multiply that side by 2. If I multiply that side by 2, I have to multiply this side by 2. And the reason I did that is so my fraction goes away. I no longer have a denominator there. So I have 1y or just y. And over here, I'm going to have 2x minus 4. And it would have been fine if you didn't distribute that 2. Okay. Now, the last step. We've done that. The last step is take replace the y with f inverse. So you take out this y and you put the inverse of our function, the no correct notation, and get 2x minus 4. Okay. This one right here. What's the first step? Y in for x. Yep, put y in for f of x, right? I knew that's what you meant. <laughs> now do your next step. What is the next step? Y yep, switch your x and your y. Good. And the next step is to solve for y. Yep, so we're going to take the 3 to the other side, and we get x plus 3, because that's how we're going to get it over there. We're going to add 3 to both sides, even though I'm skipping that step. And now we divide by 5, right? So we now have y is equal to that, right? Is equal to this. I don't feel like writing it again. Because what am I going to replace y with? So am I going to write it as y equals that? No. I need to call it the correct notation. Okay. Because the next step is to replace y with the correct notation. And now we're going to put x plus 3 over 5. Now I can write it like this. This is how I would write it. But you could write it like this. I'm just writing both notations. X divided by 5 plus 3 divided by 5. Either is fine. Either one of those. 
Any questions? Pretty easy, right? Okay, now let's look at this one here. What do you notice that's a little different about this? Well, we do have an exponent, but what do we ha now have? We didn't, yeah, it tells us that X has to be greater than or equal to three. Now, here's why. Let's see, I almost really, I'll just put it right here, really small, okay? Well, here, I'll do it over here. Here's the deal with this. And those of you that live and die by, the, live and die by your calculator, this is going to get you. Because they don't know you're doing inverses. They just think you're graphing this. If you were to graph this on your calculator, it would look like this. It's a parabola that hits up here at three. Okay. Is this one to one? Does it pass your horizontal line test if you could draw it? No. So if it if you do not do anything with this function, it doesn't have an inverse at this point. Okay, because in order for it to have an inverse, it has to cross, uh, it has to pass that horizontal, horizontal line test, if I could speak. So what they do is they put restrictions on your domain. It says, okay, the domain, we have to make it one-to-one. -one. So what it says is X has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means it takes this side away, okay? It now passes the horizontal line test because it's only that half, right? All right, so now, not that that has anything to do with you finding the inverse. It has to do with you looking at the graph and what happens. And, and if I ask you to graph this, this is how that part would be graphed. And I'll get back to the graph in just a second. Okay, so let's find the inverse. You're going to replace the f of x with y. All right. Now we're going to swap the x and the y. And now we're going to solve for y. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And we get x minus 3 over here. And we get y squared here. Okay, now, how are we going to solve for just y? I don't want to know what y squared is. I want to know what y is. What do I do? Square root. Square root. Take the square root of both sides. Now, usually, we would do plus and minus. But we can't here. And here's why. Let's go ahead and just, let's, let's finish it out, and then I'll show you why. Okay, y equals the square root of x minus 3. So then we rewrite this as an inverse function. If we did the plus and minus, okay, if, which we won't, Okay, right, let me graph this. Let's graph this, okay? This one on the same graph is going to look like this. Okay, that one looks like that, and this one's kind of hard. It looks like this. Remember what inverses do? They reflect over the y equals x line. So we really have an invisible line going through the middle here. And if my graph was good, better than this, you could tell, okay? It's not. If you'd have done plus minus, you would have had something down here. Well, first of all, is that a function? So it can't be one to one. So that's another explanation. So, all right. So we now have the inverse function. The other thing about this is, and we're going to learn this in just a minute, we will learn this, okay, is, be, you know the swapping of the X and the Y? What happens is, is a domain and range swap as well. The domain right here 
in this particular case, and we're getting ready to do this down below here, but I like these type problems to explain this. Right here, the domain, I wish I had more room, but the domain for this was, and remember it was right here, This they give us a domain. It's from zero to infinity. And the range, the smallest number here was three to infinity. Why am I using uh, why am I using brackets there? It includes it, right? To take it out, you use parentheses. And I just say this because I've been grading tests all night last night. Well, I had to stop at like 1:30 because I was falling asleep. Literally sitting up all the way asleep, and I'm like. Oh, Kim, just get up in the morning. So I got up about 45 minutes earlier and I still didn't get them open. So that's why I'm almost there though. I'm like 10, 10 tests away from being really done with the right and wrong. And part of the problem is I couldn't figure out how I wanted. I kept looking at problems going, yeah, this is a harder one with this one, but this is information is just as important as this. I just made them all two or three points. So anyway. So if you missed them, they weren't that much each. Okay, now when we look at this graph right here of our inverse, you'll see one, two, three, that our domain here became three and larger. And our range started at zero and went to infinity. Well, look what happened. The domain became the range, and the range became the domain. And that is exactly what happens on inverses, the domain and range switch. Okay. So, I'm trying to separate these two here. All right. Not that you had to know that yet, but those, that one's an easy one to show you without graph, you know, without graph or with graphing. I'm sorry. Okay, right here. Let's do the inverse. We're going to take out the x. I'm sorry, take out the f of x and put y. Now we're going to switch the x and the y. And now you solve for y. Now, guys, the y is underneath the radical. You can't do anything. You cannot, you've got to free up the y and the one. The one and the y, minus y are together underneath that radical. So how do we get rid of a cube root? Cube it, right. So we're going to cube this side and we're going to cube this side. When we do that, the reason we do that is because a cube will undo a cube root. So this cancels that out. And we're left with 1 minus y. Okay, so we have x cubed equals 1 minus y. So now I need my y to be positive. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm solving for y. I'm going to take my y over to this side. That'll make it positive. But then I'm going to subtract the x cubed over here. So we now have y equals 1 minus x cubed. I just kind of skipped my work there, OK? And now you do the correct notation. The inverse of f is 1 minus x cubed, OK? Questions on that? Yes, that's fine. Uh, question was, can you write it as a negative x cubed plus one? Perfectly fine. Okay. All right. Any questions on that part? All right. So let's do it. We'll see if it's somebody in here. Nope. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get down to what I was talking about right here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do.
let's go ahead and write, I don't care what, you wanna find the domain and range first or you wanna find the inverse first? I don't care, which one? Which one? Inverse, okay. That's the easier part, right? <laughs> it kind of is on this one. Okay, so let's find the inverse first. So down here, I'm going to do the inverse. Okay, I'm going to find the inverse of G down here. Okay, so we're going to take out the G of X. Oops, let's get it so it's not blurry. There we go. I'm going to make it Y equals 3X over x plus one. Now I'm going to tell you on this one, it's going to be a little different for some of you because you're not used to it and you don't know what to do with it. Okay. It's the steps are all the same. It's just when you're solving for y. Okay. Now the next step is we have to switch our x and our y's. That means all the x's get turned into y's. So we are going to have an x here equals 3y over y plus 1. Okay. I changed both of these x's to y's. This is where it's kind of tough, all right? And I get it, only it's not hard once somebody shows it to you. And I'm sure you've seen it before, but have forgotten because I don't really give you this many. All right, first thing we need to do is solve for y. The problem is we got two of them, all right? Let's get rid of our fraction first, because I don't like that. How are we going to get rid of a y plus 1 on the bottom? Yeah, multiply. No different than what we've always we've been doing for two tests now. How you get rid of your fraction is multiplied by the denominator. All right, so this cancels with that. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute my x over my y plus one. So x times y and x times one. So it leaves me with xy plus x equals three y. All right, well now we have y's on both sides of the equation, okay? You gotta get up all the y's to one side. So let's take this three x over to the other side. How are we gonna get it there? A track. Not a tough question. It, it wasn't a trick question. We're going to take this over here by subtracting. So at this point, we have x equals 3y minus xy. Now, we're trying to solve for y, and both of these have a y. Do you know what we can do? What's the only thing you can think of to try at this point? We can't solve for y yet. Anybody know what we could do on this side here? What's a gut feeling? Could be wrong, who knows? Take a guess, take a stab at it. There you go, factor out a y. We know how to do that, right? So let's factor, just like here. On this side, if I was solving for x, I would have factored out an x, but I'm trying to get y by itself. So I'm gonna factor out a y, I'm gonna take it up here. I get x equals y times three minus x. Ah, now we're getting close. Now we only have one y, right? It's y times this three minus x. How do you take care of multiplication? What will undo multiplication? Y. So you're gonna divide this side by three minus x because that cancels. We now have a y all by itself. And over here we have three minus x. This is not the inverse stuff that you're learning now. This is solving for y that we learned way back when. You just haven't really had that many of these type problems. And so you get y on this side, and over here, we now have x over x, 3 minus x. Okay? So now what we're going to do is replace this with our correct notation of G inverse. Guys, this is probably the hardest of all the, finding all the inverses. But really, other than learning it, it wasn't anything that you haven't done. 
It's just the, the steps that you have to take. And I know you. some of you are going, oh, I'm not good at this. Well, okay, not yet. What do you have to do to get good at something? Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Okay? So, all right, so we found the inverse. That's the first thing. Now it says find the domain and range of each of these. Well, this comes back to everything that we've learned. Okay, well, not everything, but stuff we've already learned. Right here, we have a domain. Let me do this in red. We have our domain and range, okay? All right, so domain comes from our X. Can X be anything? Or is there a restriction? Cannot be negative one. So write in interval notation how you would do that. How do you take out that negative one? What we're doing for this one. This one, you're exactly right. Yes. No, that's okay. So if you did this correctly, it should be negative infinity to negative one. How do I take out negative one? Parentheses or bracket? Parentheses. So some of you put brackets in your, on your uh, test. And then you start with negative one to infinity. Again, notice I use parentheses, okay? If you use brackets, you're saying, yeah, negative one can be an answer. Okay, now what does this mean? From our last test, what do we have at negative one? Yeah, if it was just a number line, yes. What it was the last test? Asymptotes, right? We, that was the last type things that we learned was asymptotes. What kind of asymptote do I have at negative one? Is it here? Is it a vertical or a horizontal? Vertical, good. Vertical asymptotes come from our denominator. So we have a vertical asymptote, and some of you are not gonna be happy about this, but at x equals negative one. Those of you that put negative one, I took off a point. Now, technically it was wrong, but I knew what you were talking about. You knew there was a vertical asymptote, but you have to write asymptotes as equations. And I kept telling you, it has to be X equals negative one. Technically I could count the whole thing off. But I, only, I mean, not each one was only like two or three points anyway. But I still took off one point because you did not. Asymptotes are invisible lines. So that's why you have to write it as an equation of a line. Same thing now. So we had one at x equals negative one. And then horizontal asymptotes, because this is just going to help us with the range, okay? even though, uh, again, you could graph it on your calculator and tell, but horizontal comes from the degrees, the degrees of your uh, numerator and denominator. I'm gonna move this because I think I'm gonna need this. Okay, so my vertical asymptotes here is X, but we only have one of them. And my horizontal says my numerator degree equals my denominator degree. They're both, oops, let's try over here. They're both one, right? This has a degree of one. This has a degree of one. So they are equal. This is nothing new. You should know this. That means the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator, which would be three over one. Okay, because there's really a one right here. So you'd have three over one, which is three. 
That means you have a horizontal asymptote up here at y equals three. Again, notice that I write it as an equation of a line, and that is because it's, it is a line. It's an invisible line. Okay. Now, I'm just going to show you what this graph looks like, and I did this earlier, and I notice I don't even use my calculator because I don't need to. If I plug in zero, because here's that zero, zero, there's nothing, there's no asymptotes there. If I plug in zero right here, I get zero on the top and I get one in, in the bottom. So it's zero, zero. Zero divided by one gives us zero. So I know I have a point right here. This graph's got to go here. Because it's not going to cross those asymptotes. The only time it may cross is in the middle. Okay. But you have to have two vertical asymptotes. And we don't. Okay. And then I picked, I think I picked a, a negative two for a point. I plugged it in right here and I get negative six on top and I get negative one on the bottom. So I get a positive six. Okay. So that means it's up here someplace. So this one goes like this. Okay. And the reason I do that is because I found the domain with my vertical asymptote. My range is going to come from my horizontal asymptote. It can be anything but what? Looking at this graph. We're talking about this one. What's my range? It can be anything but what? Three. Okay. So how do we take out the three? Negative infinity up to three. And then three to infinity. Does everybody understand why it can't be three because of that asymptote? And that's why that stuff that we learned earlier, we're carrying over into this section. All right. Now. Let's pretend like I didn't say anything about the domain and range earlier, right? So we found the new function. We have domain and we have range, right? What can X not be right here? And look at the denominator, because it only matters about the denominator. I don't care about the numerator. Numerator can be anything it wants. But in the denominator, what can x not be? Three. So we got to take out three, which is negative infinity, to a positive three. Parentheses. Union. And it starts on the upper, uh, the right-hand side of that three. Okay. All right, then, so what we can do, and it, you know, you, you can go ahead and do the exact same thing that we did up here, okay, with the, you know, with this and graph it, but guess what? Look at your domain here. Your range became your domain, and what is your, I'm sorry, yeah, here, what is your range going to be? It's going to be the domain of this. They're switched. And even if you graph this, you would find that there is a horizontal asymptote at negative one. Because again, the domain is pretty easy. But the horizontal asymptote, again, if you, you're comparing your degrees of your horizontal asymptote, the degrees are both ones. So you put your leading coefficient on the top, which is one. The bottom is a negative one. So you have a horizontal asymptote at negative one. That's why that's your range. It can be anything but the negative one. I'm just using information from last section. Okay, last test. Yes. <laughs> Every time, like yes. a, every time. Every time. So me personally, I would I know this, and you do too now. If you can find the domain of range of the original one, 
you get you already have them for the inverse. You just switch it. You don't have to do all that process all over again. Okay. And yes, and it is true. And that's because when we remember the switching of the X's and Y's, that's what causes it. Okay. All right. This one right here. All right, we've already done these. We did these on Monday. We, I think we get, we did two problems like that, but I thought you needed more practice probably because most people do. And it's because determining, sometimes they'll say prove, sometimes they'll say verify. Here's what you do. If this, and I took this straight out of Alex, okay? What this means is the same thing of F open circle g of x not times not multiplication all right that's the same thing as this this is the same thing as this g open circle f of x what you do to determine whether they give you two functions and you got to tell me are they inverses yes or no okay and they're going to ask in alex what your answer is here. Same thing here. And then you get to circle, which one it is, or check off the box, I guess, or what it wouldn't be circle because you check it. Okay. So what you've got to do when it looks like this, you are going to take your G and you're going to plug it into F, no matter if it's like this or like this. Here, you're going to take your F and plug it into G. And here's how you do that, okay? So right here, it says, hold on, I got to erase this. You could always do the work up here if you didn't want to erase that. I'm going to take my G, and that means I'm going to plug it into my F. So I'm going to take my F function, which is X minus 3. It's my input minus 3. Well, my input now is my G function, so I'm going to put that X plus 3 in. When I work this problem, what happens to my 3s? I have X plus 3 minus 3. What happens? They cancel out. Good. And I'm just left with X. Now... I do the same thing, but I take my F and I plug it in for my G. So I take that G function of X plus 3, the input plus 3. My input now is my F function, which is X minus one, uh, 3. I just put it in parentheses so you can see what I'm substituting in. That's all I'm doing. And what happens to the minus 3 and plus 3? Cancel out, right? And I'm left with X. Do you, it doesn't have to do with these matching. It has to do with both of them ended up to be a plain positive X. That's what happens with inverses. You always end up with just an X, all right? So yes, this is an inverse. Let's try this one. Now, Hold on, just, uh, let's go ahead and do this. This means G, plug it into my F function. My F function is a negative two over my input. Why, it, why does it say X can't be equal to zero? Why does that have that? Can't divide by zero, good. So now my input is my G, so I have this. We got fractions within fractions. Isn't this the same thing as negative 2 divided by 2 over x? Isn't that the same thing? How do I divide fractions? Thank you. First one all day that's on. Everybody looks at it going, no, this is what they do. They look at it, and I say, how do you divide fractions? And everybody goes like this. And puts their head down. <laughs> Won't look at me. Um, so good. It is you never ever divide fractions. You do this, okay? You change it to multiplication and you multiply by the reciprocal 
of what you're dividing by, which is x over p. Now your twos cancel, but the problem here is I ended up with negative x. Okay? What did I tell you it had to be? Positive x, right. So right now, I'm going to tell you that they are not inverses. But in Alex, it may still have you do this, both of them. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to take my f and I'm going to plug it into g. So my g function is 2 over the input, and my input is negative 2 over x. Okay, so I just substituted that in for the input. I'm not going to write this middle step down. It's 2 times negative x over 2. I just went straight to multiplying by its reciprocal. Here, my twos cancel, and I'm still left with negative x. Again, see how these matched? But that doesn't verify that, it doesn't determine whether they're inverses. They have to be a positive x, okay? All right, let's try this one right here. Same exact thing, okay? We are going to take my g, plug it into f. So I have 6 over my input, which is 6 over x. So this again, I take 6, and I multiply by this reciprocal, because we're dividing by it. And we end up with x. You do the same thing. You take your f, and you plug it into g. My g is 6 over the input. The input is 6 over x, which is the same thing as what we just did, right? 6 times x over 6. And we end up with plain x. Are they inverses? Are they inverses? Did they both end up to be x? Yes, they are inverses. You all try this one. I use my sunglasses as breathing glasses. That doesn't work very well. The first one, when you do this, will automatically tell you that it is not inverses. They are not inverses. But the reason I finished this out is because I'm not sure if Alex will make you finish that out. And I just want you to make sure that you can do composition functions. Okay. So those are not inverses. Okay. All right. This one right here. Okay, so it says, gives us a G function, it gives us our H function. Um, we first have to find the inverse of G. And look right here. I also has something with the inverse of H. That's the easier one because they give you points. So let's do that one first. If they just give you points, you just switch these. That's all you do with points. So this would be negative 3, negative 8. This point is going to be 2, negative 3. This one is negative 1, comma 2. And this one is 1, comma 3. So if you want, we can go ahead and do this. What does this tell you? What does this 2 stand for? In every single problem, what is that when it gives us something like that? That's our x. 
x is equal to 2, I want to know what y is. So what is it? Negative 3. Here's my x of 2. My y is negative 3. Okay, so we're done with that problem, right? All right, this one right here, we got to find our inverse of g. So I'm going to take out my g and I'm going to put of x, I'm going to put a y there. So I have y equals x plus 2 over 7. Now we're going to swap our x and our y's. So we have x equals y plus 2 over 7. I'm going to solve for y. How do I get rid of the 7? Multiply both sides by 7. 7x equals y plus 2. And now subtract the 2. And you get 7x minus 2 equals y. Then you replace y with your correct notation, which is g inverse. So I'm going to put this answer right over here. Okay. Now, we just talked about this. What happens on composition of inverses? What is it always? It always equals x. So when you do this part right here, it gives you x. It'll kick out x. But what does this tell you? That's what x is equal to, okay? So this is equal to a negative 2. Now, okay, that's it for today. I wasn't going to do these anyway, the bottom ones. Just remember, there's no in-person class on Friday. I will send an announcement out both on Brightspace and uh, by text to tell you what to do for Friday. Bye, guys.